former police interceptor, Mr. Ben Pearson. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much for having me. What are some of the worst interactions you've had as a single crewed officer arriving at a scene? I arrived first at scene, and next thing you know, ambulance and fire come in. There's, there's firefighters getting put in headlocks. There's ambulance people getting beat up. There's, it's just bedroom, but you're up first, Bobby, on scene. Police intercepted. What was that like? So I never wanted to do it. I've always had massive issues with my confidence. So Ben says, get in car, I'll do all speaking. You just drive. And it just happened from there. I'm Bimmy's Food. And I'm just Gudgeon. And we're your hosts here on the Breaking Bread podcast, where, according to esteemed listener Mark Neal, it's basically two mates talking shit that's entertaining whilst one wears a big jumper because the heating's too dear. <laughs> De- dear in this sense is, uh, it means too, it's kind of sli- like British slang for expense. I don't know if it's slang, but it means expensive. Has he spelt it right though? Yeah, yeah, he spelt it right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's because Josh doesn't put the, uh, the heating on because we make no money. So that's why I wear this <laughs> sweater. Anyway, um... I was going to say, um, we have a guest today in the shape of former police interceptor, Mr. Ben Pearson. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 back. Thank you very much for having me. I couldn't nice help to doing that. You. That was my uh, PC <laughs> plod going for you there. I couldn't resist. Uh, it's nice to uh, finally meet you Good in love. the flesh, seen some of your vids. Um, not the police interceptor shit. I don't watch Channel 5, but your vids, <laughs> I've seen those. Um, <laughs> I stopped watching Channel 5 when they stopped doing that soft core porno stuff when I was at high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when they, they launched Channel 5 and it was like a, on, on like a Friday night at 11 o'clock, they'd play a bit of an erotic thriller. All right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm too young. I think I'm too oh, young. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every, every like 15 year old kid was just devastated when they stopped doing that a couple of years later because they want to go a bit more mainstream. Anyway. <laughs> go to your bedroom early and watch a bit of TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, also we should say, real quick, I, I'm leading this for a change. I'm that, gosh, um, Yeah, in, in case uh, you hear anything a bit weird, um, we're being battered currently by Storm Eunice. So if you hear anything odd... Um, yeah, we, we literally couldn't have a worse place for a studio when the weather's bad. We're in an old mill building that's got, is it Velux windows? Like, you know, the... I don't know. Them sorts of windows. So if it, if it starts raining, it's going to be tapping. We're on the top floor... 100 mile an hour winds are forecast. Um, it could go to shit, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could. Um, I, do you only think that, I always think that the people at the Met Office must have a sense of humor because the more severe the storm, the more they tend to name it after like meek old ladies. This is called Storm Eunice. <laughs> Eunice is like the kind of person you'd imagine buying the set of commemorative coins on QVC. It's like Mrs. Miggins, isn't it? It's it is your Mrs. mate. Mrs. Miggins, she's always there. Proper place, proper time. <laughs> When, when Ben describes anything on the channel that's uh, like related to a stereotypical old lady, she's called Mrs. Miggins and she's always in the wrong place at the wrong time. So Storm Eunice is definitely the wrong place at the wrong time today. Um, yeah. It must be a slow news day though, because I was watching it this morning and they're like, this is the worst storm. Of, I mean, we probably shouldn't comment on it because it might get really bad, but at the minute it doesn't look that bad. But yeah, it, we've got two red weather warnings, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and they were sending people you know, um, weather, weather people to each side and reporting from it. And I'm like, ain't the bigger fish to fry at the moment? Because yeah. there's the... Uh, Weather's the, the biggest deal in The England. news is pretty hot at the moment. Yeah. Like, I feel like I, I'm putting out there the lizards of sent Storm Eunice to detract <laughs> from what's going on with Prince Andrew, what's going on in Russia. Oh, shit, that, <laughs> that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Play, yeah, touch as many sensitive topics as you want, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to get worse. We've got, we've got former police interceptor in here, so... Just, well, before we get into that, though, I'm sorry to just keep you sidelined for a second, but no, should fine, we do mate. the perfunctory stuff of me asking you how you, even though nobody cares, how, how have you been this week? Because uh, I saw, I saw that you, uh, that you got your blue belt. So terrified were you by my threats of suplexing you through a table <laughs> at some point this year. You'd been studying the art of BJJ. That's two J's, not BJ. BJJ. <laughs> and you got your blue, your blue belt this week. I indeed, uh, yeah, I got my... Uh, Is that a good one? Yeah, it's, it's the sort of first rung of the ladder. They say that that's the, the, the one that takes the longest to get, to go from white to blue belt. Um, yeah, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, I trained out of AVT... MMA in Leeds uh, under Danny Mitchell and Jay Furness. And uh, yeah, I, well, I, I stepped back, I started doing it actually. I, I started to look back and it was late 2018 that I uh, first stepped in the gym because I was filming a, uh, a seminar with Frank Mir. So I don't know if you know him. He's a former UFC heavyweight world champion. He beat Brock Lesnar. He's like one of the the goats of the UFC. Isn't Brock Lesnar a wrestler? Yeah, but he fought, he fought in the UFC. 
You know? Oh, right. So he's yeah, like, yeah, he does yeah. the fake stuff and the real stuff. Absolutely, At yeah. the risk of offending WWF fans. <laughs> WWE, whatever the fuck it's called these days. <laughs> you, have you heard of Frank Mir? Uh, no. No, you're not a UFC I know, no, I, don't, I, I probably have, but I can't remember. I know Baz Rutten. He's old school. Yeah, that's, well, yeah. It's, you know, similar time. Um, but Gordon. yeah, I, uh, I, I started back then um, and sort of four years later, I finally got a blue belt, but I'd, admittedly life and COVID got in the way for a couple of years. I didn't actually step foot on the mats for probably 18 months. How many um, were after blue? Uh, this then goes to purple, brown, and then black. So Why, they need to, we've talked about this before. They need to just ditch the brown thing. Nobody wants a brown belt, do they? Come on. The, one of the worst colors yeah, on planet. That means you're close to the, to the black belt. But they should make it something else like blood red or something. Mate, it's exciting. <laughs> I, I put a post on my Instagram and I genuinely like it. You know, I've said it before on the podcast, but those that are ever contemplated starting any sort of martial arts, it's, it's a really good, uh, a good one to get into, but a very useful one for self-defense, builds confidence. I want to do it actually. I'm just scared yeah. of getting brutally hurt. Anyway, do you have anything to talk about before we like jump, jump into something? Because I thought it was going to, that, that takes us quite quickly into a, uh, Something I saw this week that I was going to ask Ben about. Fire away. <laughs> that that jumper's ridiculous though, man. Like, for those that are listening, like, let's, like, can we not just, can we acknowledge what the fuck are you wearing? I actually wore this today specifically because I knew I'd, I'd get some hammer for it. It's, it's like a, it's like a running joke now that I wear a sweater on the, uh, some hideous fluffy sweater on the, I like this, it's a Santa Cruz. So if you, if you forget last week's episode about how bad brand deals are, Santa Cruz, if you want to send me some free shit, I'll wear it. I'll wear it. <laughs> it's funny, he's walked, he's walked in there and he's bought a kid's jumper and he's like, look at how long this is. And he pulled it down it's and really like we're above his knees, it like a dress. <laughs> it, it's really this unusually long, it's regular long, size. It's long just line. You're, you're tiny. No, no, kids, kids wear long line stuff these days. <laughs> um, let's, I think what we should probably do before we dive into something that uh, you reminded me of by talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, let's have Ben introduce himself um, to, I mean, you don't, yeah, I, I can introduce you real quick, but I might just undersell it. Ben is a former police officer um, who you might recognize from the uh, Channel 5 show, Police Interceptors, um, now has a YouTube channel and a podcast. Can I say that? It's yeah, quite yeah, new. But exclusive. Yeah. Um, where he talks about um, some of his experiences, does some reaction videos to like famous uh, policey stuff, chases and whatnot. <laughs> um, and that, yeah, that's, I, I'm, that's probably, that I'm sure it's, it's not all that you've actually got a job on YouTube with that description there. <laughs> like, how, are you, how the fuck are you entertainer? <laughs> and you've got a podcast. I did my best. Ben, introduce yourself, man. What, 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 what do you do? Good morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm Ben Pearson, former Channel 5 Police Interceptor, uh, 19 years in West Yorkshire Police and part of the Rose Policing Group, uh, where it was concentrating on pursuits, uh, dealing with burglars, murderers, uh, high profile jobs and um, denying criminals use at road. Um, I've wrote two books. Uh, I'll probably call for that one there. Use at road. Use at, <laughs> use at road. Proper That's Yorkshire, lad. Like Proper like Yorkshire. I like it. Um, wrote two books, both went to number one bestseller on uh, Amazon. And I'm now pushing for a me- being technically a mental health advocate for post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, and then, yeah, YouTuber and. Now, podcasts are due to this legend sat outside of us, which is the the Josh of the Gudgeon. <laughs> the Josh, Josh of the, the Gudgeon. <laughs> Josh of the Gudgeons. That's, <laughs> that's two number one bestsellers we've had on the show now. Yeah. Put that in the bio so when we actually approach some more guests, it might be like, fuck <laughs> me, they've had two bestsellers on. I imagine your book is probably better than Mike's though, which yeah. was empty. Yeah, we, we, we had a guy on Mike. called Mike Winnett. Um, it, it, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a YouTube channel and right. long story short, it, 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 to prove that to disprove some of the business people that write books and they're getting them one bestsellers in some like random category. Yeah. He um, wrote a, a, a book, just put blank page on every single page for 160 pages, issued it to Amazon. They released it. He then put it to like the lowest price, like 69 pence, got his mates to, to buy it. And it went to number one in like the business category <laughs> with a blank book. So we're like, so it's, it's a lot of shit in it. If you, if you can hack the system like that, yeah, but yours absolutely. was legitimate. You yeah. sold it at, a, at the full price. Yeah. If you go, if you Google, actually, I Google you, Ben, before I I, I got oh, thank here you today. Feel and I sorry, well, I need to do a bit of research. He wasn't doing it this week, <laughs> um, but you, the the book comes up like on the you know the little you, when you search something on Google yeah, and be like this comes up, but then there's like a row of shit you can buy, and the book's on there. Amazing. And it's available in an audio version is the first one and we, we get to get the second one recorded. Yeah, we need to do that because I'm getting pushed all time for that. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's. Um, it's been a fantastic journey since retiring because I thought once I'd retire, I'd be stacking shelves at local supermarket. Not that uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but they always, when you retire from police, they always write you off into a, um, a lower performing job or a lower uh, career aspiration area, if that makes sense. So they'll think you're going to come back as a PCSO or you're yeah. going to come back as a, a crossing guard and that sort of thing. And all I want to do will basically 
entertain people and get my message out there. Nice. It seems to be working. Yeah, man. If, well, very much so. Um, you had some questions you wanted to ask, didn't you? Yeah. What uh, It reminded me of the question that I, one, the one question I prepared um, <laughs> when we were talking about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, because uh, a few days ago, I saw this video. I've got some notes here. Um, yeah. So it's talk about video. Um, yeah, I saw, I, I, I just find, Honestly, it's absolutely fucking mind blowing the position you're in. <laughs> Research, Shut up, talk about video. Um, yeah, I did, I did, I, did um, I was on Twitter, right? Um, boo, fucking Twitter. But I was, I saw this video. I just came across it by chance. Um, and it was a video of, um, somebody claiming police brutality. I don't, I'm not going to go into the video. I don't know what happened in the video because it was one of those where it's kind of clipped in such a way that you couldn't really make an assessment of the yeah, situation. Yeah. Cause it got, you didn't know what had happened before. Right. Yeah. So I, that's not really the, the issue I want to get into what it was. It was actually in England. Cause a lot of time you get these and they're in America and whatnot. Yeah. It was a, a British, uh, uh, copa. Copa. I don't know what I said, like a Jody, but he was, yeah, he was, he was, uh, arresting a, or he was, at first he wasn't trying to arrest a bloke. He was just, there was some breach of the peace happening, I think. And, um, he was gonna, uh, it got to the point where this guy was not complying with what he was trying to tell him. Yeah. So, and it escalated to the point where the, the cop had to arrest him, right? And he was then resisting arrest. But the, the striking thing to me was that it was a one man, it was one bloke, right? And I always think that cops usually go around in twos for, for safety more than anything. I guess that's not the case, but that's, the, the question essentially is, the video goes on and um, he has to, he's trying to arrest this guy, the guy's resisting arrest um, for some reason. Um, so he has to try and get this bloke on the ground to get the cuffs on him. And I thought, is that a common occurrence that as a single copper, you're going to encounter a guy that you might have to overpower and arrest by yourself? Every day. It's, it's very, very rare, especially being a, <clears throat> excuse me, especially being a traffic cop by Edible Crude. Um, so I'll just say, for instance, for the West Yorkshire area, so everywhere in West Yorkshire on a night shift, they might put out uh, six cars Wakefield area and six cars Bradford. So Bradford have got to cover all the way up to Junction 22 and 62, all Halifax, Calderdale, um, all the way up to Home Firth, sort of like area, um, and then Dewsbury, Huddersfield, all the way back around the top end of Bradford, all the way through to Menston, and you might have six traffic cars and the majority of the time you're single crewed. So if you can think about getting in a pursuit with two shit bags that have just done a burglary, <laughs> 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 two shit bags just done a burglary, uh, car crashes or you, you actually pink car in, you get out and there's two of them, there's just one of you. So it literally is all hands on deck and it's down at fighting or grappling or taking people down. But our oh, lassie's a bobby. She's a, 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 your typical five foot three blonde kind of smallish girl. She goes out on her own all the time. And then whatever you come across, you've got to do. Now it is easier a lot of time for the women to arrest because a lot of blokes will just say, yeah, go on then. I'm not going to fight yeah. a woman. Um, with, with men, on men, it's literally that, yeah. It's, it's an all out war, yeah. Figure, how, how do you, because like, obviously you get training to some degree and how, you, how, how the best way to arrest somebody is. Because I have a lot of sympathy for the uh, police and the, especially these days when everyone's got a phone, right? Yeah. And you're trying to arrest somebody and they can clip it like this this clip yeah. that I'm talking about. I don't know what happened there, but it, it could have been, I mean, the, the bloke wasn't complying. If somebody tries to arrest me, I'm just going to be like, yeah, chicks dig a, a photograph of a guy in cuffs. <laughs> take a shot. I'm like, Josh, take a photograph of this. I'll put it on my wall. Um, but I, yeah, you just I comply, right? And if I'm innocent of what I've done, we'll, we'll sort it out later. Would, yeah. uh, later would, we'll sort it out later. Um, <laughs> and um, But yeah, this guy's uh, uh, arresting. I thought the, the dude didn't, to be fair, the, the, I, I've not seen many cops who aren't physically, but like you're a tall bloke, you know, you're not a small dude. Um, this guy looked pretty average, the cop in the, in the video. And I think fortunately on this occasion, the guy he was arresting was kind of, he was a bit old, older certainly. And he looked kind of slight, you know, I don't say weak, but um, he Ready put to be up, taken down. Yeah, he put up a fight though. But I, th I was, I started thinking, well, if it came to it, if this cop tried to arrest me and I felt like just resisting, I feel like I could put up a decent, Yeah, I might, I might not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it got me thinking basically, what, what I'm trying to say is if you're, let's say you're a, my size, just an average bloke, a little dude as, as Josh average. often calls yeah. me. Um, and I'm going to try some, some criminals who's seven feet tall and built like a brick shit house. I, what, how do I, what do I do? You know, can I tase the guy? Can I spray him with CS gas or yeah. what? There's certain levels of what you can do. So basically you, your first one's verbal. So you go into your verbal, um, how can I put it? Commands. Stick them up. That yeah, kind of basically thing. stick them up. You know, <laughs> stop it, dude. You know what I mean? You're under a regular lot. The gigs up. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and police, and even though you don't have it, we've done it loads of times where we've chased half people on foot and we've gone, release the dog. And then stopping that turn around. Don't let the dog bite me. That's like Mr. Burns, um, release the hounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and then you go up to your CS Gas and then you go up to your bat and, and then you go up to all those broke loose and you're going to have to technically fight for your life. Um, but yeah, you've got your uh, yellow button or your orange button for code zero. But it is that thing where you've got to just just either justify it or just step away from it. Sometimes if you've got a family to go home to and you know you're not a big lad, you know you're not a fighter, uh, well, saying that a strong lass as well, you're not a fighter and it's just think, I'm, it's just not worth it. You just, you've got to let them go because you don't want to. Is it like a protocol then? And that's, so let's say you, you, you chase, you, you're a tra- traffic cop, right? You've got a guy who's suspected of, I don't know, he's just, he got a bunch of drugs in his car or whatever. And um, so you corner him and then you're going to try and arrest him and he's resisting arrest. If you think, shit, I can't arrest this guy, he's massive. Do you do you have to, you, you kind of call for backup or just, is there some <clears throat> other thing that kind of comes in after you to sort out? To, to no, no, of- so I, I don't know where you're coming from. So like I said, so I'm very careful of what I say because there's a, the, at the moment there's a massive amount of negativity or hate towards the police, thinking they're heavy handed or this sort of thing. So if you think about it, I'm a dad, I've got two kids at home. I've just pursued a car that's been stolen in a burglary. They're wearing balaclavas, but they don't see this on a video. People just say it's police brutality. Yeah. They've crashed the car and there's someone, that person's injured. They're not bothered about it. They're getting out and giving a run. You have a foot chase, you get hold of them, you throw them to the floor. Well, members of the public think they're just going to put their arms behind the back. And they're not. They start yeah. lashing out, start punching, kicking. You can't, you don't know if they've got a weapon or a blade, a screwdriver. Um, and all you can do is think about your kids at home. So you use your training, your techniques, but you've also got to try and subdue. You've got to try and put cuffs on. And even when people got cuffs on, they're still their butt spit, bite, kick. It's just not when you put cuffs on, they How stop. Grim's that? It's literally they're spitting in your mouth, they're spitting in your eyes. Oh. These things, you're worrying about Epsi. It's like that Nick, Nicki Minaj song. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Is that Nicki Minaj? Um, is it Nicki Minaj? What, what's that? Wap. Wap. Is yeah. that Nicki Minaj? Yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. And- no, it's oh, not. Cardi B. Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, she says spit in my mouth, and that's about like she wants someone to spit in her mouth. Yeah, I, I imagine <laughs> anyway. you wouldn't. Uh, well, if it's consensual, whatever floats your boat. If I remember, is that what you used to watch on, say, on yeah. Friday night on Channel 5 the, at no, 11 o'clock? Was, that was some high class stuff, man. They, they couldn't <laughs> act, but the class was there. Sorry, man. Go <laughs> no, on. it's fine. Um, and then you look at the bobbies that have been murdered on duty in West Yorkshire, like Sharon Bedfinishke, um, Ian Broadus, not all others, where they're just going to work on Boxing Day and then they've got a gun put in the face and they're shot dead. Yeah. You just don't want that to happen to you. So when you see the lad who's, I'm, and I'm, this is me personally, and like you just said, if the police stop me now, even if they know who I am, they stop me and they say, I don't care what's going on, but that car's been reported stolen and get out, you're under arrest. Even though I know it's not stolen. Yeah. I'd still say. Yeah, you comply. Fine, right? you put cuffs on me because it'll work itself out. But it's that attitude of, I'm just going to kick off. Mm. And I don't want you to kick off. I don't want to use force. You don't want to kick off you, but you, it's like you're pushing me into an area where we don't need to be. Yeah. Um, so then they teach you things like knee strikes to on thigh. So it gives you dead leg, which we all know from school. When someone gives you dead leg, it hurts like hell. But then when you see someone near them, it looks really, really aggressive, but it's one of the least forms of defence or self-defence that the teacher. Yeah. And the teacher a punch, but it's like, uh, obviously everyone knows how to punch, and, but some people it's like, oh. I absolutely don't know how to punch. But they'll the teach record. how to do um, like a back fist, but on someone's arm. So you'll see Bobby's on a, all in a scramble and arms going up and saying, oh, look, he's punching him. Well, he's not. If you look, he's punching his arm because they might have a knife or they might have a weapon. Yeah. So what looks like isn't always what you're seeing if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I feel that totally. Um, right. But there's so much here because I, I, I know myself now, I sit on and watch news and I sit and watch what's going on and I just think it must be so hard now and I personally wouldn't want to be a Bobby now. If I were in traffic now, I'd be petrified of everywhere I go. But what they don't see again is they don't see briefings that you go into and they say, oh, we've had information there's going to be a tourist cell and what they're going to do, they're going to hunt down or they're going to make a fake traffic collision, call traffic out, and then they're going to execute you live on YouTube or put it on live on TV. They're going to stream it. So every time at three in the morning when you're single crew and they say, right, we need you to go to Bradford Road at Dewsbury, four car RTC, two people injured. And you're racing there 130 mile an hour to get there. And you get there and you're thinking like, they could be cutting my hair off in a minute. Or I could be, I could be dead. Yeah, yeah. And you think about your kids. So you're always getting out with that heightened sense of awareness. Plus people just don't like you because of the uniform. And it's back to football stuff that I don't understand. But me and you could be best mates. Me and you meet on holiday. Oh, do you know Josh? Oh, I know Josh. And then we're having a few beers. But then when we come back and you've got a Chelsea top on and I've got a Liverpool top on, we want to beat each other up. 
And oh, said, I, I, I've never understood that tribalism. Well, uh, I, I mean, don't. We yeah. talk, I was talking to, uh, to not Mike, the other guy <laughs> who's not quite well trained enough to be doing the Mike job yet. But we were talking with George. Do you, handsome, I don't like calling him handsome George because he's fucking handsome. Um, and, uh, you might have noticed him in the uh, Christmas video. You might have noticed his extremely thin arm. Thin arm like, he was subbing in for me and people were like, why is that guy's arm really skinny? What's going on? But um, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, we were talking about that. Like I, I don't get... It's a game, isn't it? But I, yeah. I, I get what you mean. There's a bit of kind of tribalism there. And, so and, people just want to hit you because of the uniform they're wearing. They might not speak to you. You just get out of the car and someone wants to throw a bottle at you. Someone wants to hit you. Someone wants to try and stab you just because you're just wearing a police. Yeah, they don't consider you a person. Yeah, you're that, a I'm, person. I'm, I'm Ben, behind the uniform. That's yeah. what I've tried to <laughs> articulate before and on the video saying I'm just a man wearing a uniform. That yeah. uniform could be for British Gas. That uniform could be for McDonald's. And I want you to see you under that person. Yeah. And that's what I think a lot of people just see. And they see an authority, they see the government. And yeah, let's be honest, I'm not going political here, but they see stuff and they just want to stamp on it from a great height. And yeah. the, the, you're the lowest of the low and the easiest they can get their hands on. Yeah. So they'll stamp on you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, there's been so many occasions where I've had weapons thrust in my face or I've been on floor getting my head kicked in and you're just thinking like... I'm not being funny, but I don't want to be doing this. It's worth the paycheck. Yeah, it's not, and it's not. So, just recalling what uh, Adam just said there then about, um, so your single crew, like what are some of the worst um, interactions you've had as a single crewed officer arriving at a scene or what, what situations have you been in by yourself? Like, can you recall some of those? Yeah, so um, I don't want to go too graphic. Yeah, yeah though, because like I nearly fainted when Honor was talking about people getting blown up. Yeah, 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 no, yeah I, won't, I, won't, I won't go too graphic, but it's basically the war. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a, uh, I don't know if I told you about the, the, the fatal with the Vauxhall Vectron, it's true for no lad with a broken back. Have I gone through that? Possibly. So in theory, I won't go into graphic details, but two families live really close to each other. Yeah. One family, two young lads, say like 17, have got in a car and shot through a junction, lost control of the car and got head on into another car. Right, okay. There was one fatality in that car, one woman with a head, basically open, two kids that have been ejected from the car, uh, one uh, gentleman with severe brain damage. In, in the offending car, there was a car on its roof, driver had a broken back, uh, other one were unconscious. I arrived first at scene. The people who were fatal in the car were only going two doors down. They, they crashed into the wall outside technically the family's house and they're having a big party. Right. So they've come out, the family of the other people have come out, they've all been fine at the street. I've got there, there's dead bodies in the road. And next thing you know, ambulance and fire come in. There's there's firefighters getting put in headlocks. There's ambulance people getting beat up. There's it's just bed done. But you're at first, Bobby, on scene, and it's just crazy because you just think I've got to try and control this. But you, how would you feel if it were your family that were on the floor? How would you feel if it were your, your family that had been broke back and you don't know what's going on? Yeah. And then the testosterone, the energy, and the fear factor for all them is so high, and you've got to get out, and you've just got to be like trying. I, when I say manhandle. There's a lot of pushing. There's a lot, get back, get back, stay back. Because all you're trying to do is get everyone secure so you can deal with injured parties. Yeah. But all they see is arsehole officer coming forward, pushing people. Yeah, yeah. And you think, you look at the bigger story. Our, our life, is, uh, our job is to protect life, save life, yeah. detect crime and protect property. That's it. So regardless of what I'm doing, if I saw someone on the floor not breathing, wearing a uniform or not, I'd get down out. If I saw you with a cut artery, Uniform or not, I'd help you. Yeah. But people don't see that you're just a nice person trying to help, but also you're wearing the uniform. Yeah. And it's that sort of thing. They just see anger towards you. And I think there's also got to be a lot of, uh, how can I put it? Um, you're trying your hardest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm putting myself in a situation where I'm at danger. Yeah. My family might lose me, but I'm just doing it because I want to help people. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of... Well, I mean, on all that, I guess, for those that are listening, you, you may have seen some of Ben's stuff on YouTube before. You may have seen Ben on uh, the Jack Mate Happy Hour podcast. Um, so we don't want to recap what was said on those podcasts, as I said, when we had Rate My Takeaway on. We don't want to sort of uh, duplicate a podcast that's already out there. Let's, let's We can talk about um, other things. But can you, for those that are listening that might not come across you on Interceptors or your work, can you recap your career in the police um, and just give them a bit of a bio of yeah. what led you to, to sort of this point. Yeah. So, um, as I said, 19 years, I think 15 in traffic. So our job was just literally patrolling roads, high-speed pursuits, constantly having to juggle the, the, the comms, the TPAC regulations, the driving standards at 130 mile an hour in a 30 zone, getting the burglars that are there to rob you and commit crime and take all your 
valuable possessions, but also deal with fetals and you're dealing with fetal collision after fetal involving children or people. You sat with them when they die, you're holding them. Then you've got to go deal with the families uh, and tell the families that they're not coming home. And you get home, you've got the blood on them. So all that starts to take a toll on your mental health. Then I lost my mum um, and it was my decision to turn my mum's ventilator off. Within two weeks of going back to work, after my mum died, the first job I got sent to were a fatal child. Um, and I didn't sort of like get the, what I describe as the care afterwards. And all I were, call, all I were calling for was, and I'm not being like wet here, but just a hug or just a, how are you doing, pal? Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Nothing. Fatal, fatal, fatal. My dad tells me he's got terminal cancer. Sit with my dad six months later, dad goes, and then literally it all just starts spiraling downhill. And you're thinking, I can't control this. But if I, I put it on the other aspect, if someone told me these are the symptoms of mental health, these are the terms of PTSD, I could have survived better. I could have pushed further forward and I could still be in the job and none of this would be happening. But they didn't. So then when I got to the bottom and I got therapy and I broke at work and they basically said, you're not good enough to be a Bobby anymore because your head's gone. But I'm massively highly decorated. I've got eight bravery awards for talking people down off buildings, um, people trying to cut their own throats with knives, um, pulling people out of burning cars, I've got massive bravery awards. I, I will put forward for a, a Royal Human, I can't, what's it, Human, a, a Humanitarian Award. There's all sorts of things, putting murderers away. Um, <clears throat> and then when you get told that you're not good enough, you lose all your identity. So when I'm at the bottom and I've come up and I've pushed forward, I want to be that person now that says, this is how you can fall. These are the symptoms you can have. Yeah. And then, so every day, because I've talked about mental health and we, we Josh's help in the channel, we've boosted and then I get probably 60 messages a day through people just talking about, my, I'm struggling at work. And these are chief superintendents because if you think about how things roll, it all, all shit always rolls downhill. Yeah. And no one wants to come out and say, I'm struggling. And everybody in life struggles. Like you, you might worry about your missus, you might worry about your, your money, you might worry about your life, you might worry about any, any illnesses. And it all goes into this backpack. And I just always see this backpack as being full. And then if it's full, how would just deal with it? And I just want people not to hurt themselves. I want mums and dads to still have the son. I want kids to have the dad or the mum. And I think it's that we're, we're in a world now where things are mentioned massively for pride. The massive rainbow laces, LGB, is it LGBT? Q plus. Q plus. Um, and that's massive when I say acceptable now. It's because people didn't understand it, but it's there. But what people don't understand now is a lot of things with mental health. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh, Adam, you broke your arm. Yeah, yeah, I've got a pot on. Yeah, six weeks time it comes off. But if you come in now and talk to me, no one sees what's going on. And that's what we're trying to make people aware of that. Everyone, regardless of what job you're in, you might be a train conductor, whatever, everyone can struggle. Let's not go on to train conductors, for God's sake. <laughs> he's fallen out before. enough of them. Has yeah. it, don't you think it's straight? Yeah, I've, I've, one of I've fallen out with one of them and it was his fault. They were bad, like, yeah. <laughs> um, don't you think it's one of those things, I guess, like as, as regular civilians that are not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not criminals. So we don't, we, we don't interact with police very often. Um, we don't, uh, as a, a regular member of public, you don't really consider what police officers, firefighters, fire service, uh, Ambulance members have to go through every day. Fucking hell, do you want to make that a bit louder? Just those listed is. I should, I should open those before <laughs> before we get started. I need coffee today. Is that two? This, yeah. Jesus. Hey, uh, yeah, you, you don't consider the um, the effects that it would have on a daily basis. And it seems strange that even in 2022, the mental health sort of backing of all these emergency services is not like a priority. Like It's, it's almost like it should be a, a six-monthly or three monthly or quarterly review yeah. to just check in on people that have, that are in these active environments all the time and just say like, what's going on, you know, cause I get, is, is mental health one of those things that you could work on actively to try and like, yeah. if, if you, if you look back at your career now, if somebody had have actively spoke to you, look for signs and symptoms, your career would have been longer. And I guess it would have then yeah. progressed the, the force further yeah. if you would have, cause you'd have still been in there. So then yeah. you could have been proactive to newcomers and newbies coming in. Yeah. Um, and is, is stuff like that on the cards or? Um, it, it, it's one of those things where you go into an office and they'll have these posters up. Like, a, for instance, have you heard of Andy's Man Club? Andy's Man Club? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I want to be in it. What is it? It's a mental health uh, charity. Is it a yeah, so charity? It, it's formed by like they'll call Lou Campbell, an ex-professional rugby player. All right. And his brother-in-law committed suicide who we'll call Andy. So basically, Luke started a, um, a bit of a come, come and have a chat. Yeah. And that's all it is, come and have a chat. 
but now it's UK wide. I think there's like 50 venues and it's got thousands of people. And all it does is just say, come come down and have a chat. And it's, yeah. there's no stigma on anyone. And the amount, so we, I, I, I said the other day, I'm sat in the toilet having a poo at work playing Candy Crush as you do. I don't know why you're looking at camera because this is the kind of block I am. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like the poo part was all right. Then you went to Candy Crush and I just yeah. thought, no, come on now. He texts me this morning. Sorry right, to just interject. On. He texts me and he's like, sorry, lad, I'm going to be running a bit late. I've just spent 45 minutes having a poo. I'm like, oh, epic this morning. I can't wait to hear about Did that. Did you get purple legs? It was a fucking feature length <laughs> poo that was, man, I tell you. Do you have to stand up to break it off? <laughs> <laughs> I wiggled a bit. But yeah, I'm back at the toilet door. It said Andy's Man Club. Yeah. And then everybody I'd spoke to thought it was like a pool club or a snooker club, or it was like a, yeah. let, let's all go. It's like a youth club for adults yeah. kind of thing, but for men. And then no one comes forward and says, because I'm, I was so, and this is not an arrogant thing, I'm so highly trained, but firearms are so highly trained. Act team, which are our version of SWAT, yeah. are so highly trained, and they do character, jump out of helicopters across Thames and get on a skid, and you, you, yeah. what you see them are like swatting, um, that's what they do. But one sniff... One wobble, one little, uh, I'm struggling. It's like, whoa, give us all your permits. Yeah. So not one person, I'm going through worst divorce in the world. It, she's trying to take me for everything. I'm just a bit, oh, my head's not right. You won't come into work and say, Sarge, I'm just, my head's not right. Our lassie's going to give us your gun, give us your permits. Well, I'm not going to shoot anyone. Yeah. But they're yeah. petrified. You're just going to go around middle of Leeds and, and start blitzing people. Yeah. And so they protect themselves from normalisation, but not protect that person where if you start at the grassroots of things and build them up, all these people are be. You go to McDonald's and you get pin, um, what is it, seller of the week, and you get five yeah, stars yeah. or whatever, and you don't wall like yeah. comes up. That's where it should be. It should be pushing people and say, right, you're struggling, fine. Uh, so I always, I always take this. Do you, do you remember? Oh, you said about eighties. Have you seen Lethal Weapon? Yeah, with Mel who, Gibson. Who hasn't seen Lethal? Uh, Come I haven't on now. seen it. It's part of growing yeah. up. It's like Die Hard, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's well, not that good, but yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your mouth out. <laughs> <laughs> so in there. Riggs is losing his mind because his wife's being killed. Mm. So in the police station in 1984 when it was filmed, they've got that blonde-haired woman who's saying, please, Riggs, come talk to me. So they've got a therapist and a counsellor in a police station in 1984. Yeah. I know it's only a film. We're in 2022 and we still don't have one. Yeah. So we just need somewhere to go to chat because you're, you're dealing with so much shit. I've been there when they've, they've got a dead body back when ambulance and doors are open and they're just like brushing blood, you know, like off yeah. the floor and it's coming out of back. And you're thinking, then you've got to go home and kiddly, cuddle and kiss your kids. And you're just thinking like, can I just sit down with someone and have a cup of tea and yeah. a chat without fear of losing things? And that's why people don't come forward. So what we're trying to say is come forward and say, I've got a problem. Because the car, uh, under all these things now, all the disability laws and human rights, the car just turn around and say, right, because the first thing they said to me is, right, you're going to go to FCMU, which is a little hole in the middle of nowhere. They dump you in it and they just make you do computer work. So you're thinking, think so. I'm struggling. No natural lie, you know, everyone's around you, it's all oppressive. Rather than saying, well, why don't you just meet all new people that are coming in, shake their hand and say, I am Ben Pearson, so and so, and then take them through to an office and be a bit more, why couldn't you just be on the Facebook side of yeah, the I police and do advertising on Facebook and do stuff pro promotion is, but they, they hide you away. You're that little little cousin that don't come at school and like, do, do you know Adam? No, we don't talk about him, he's black sheep at family. It's that sort of thing. And I just think there should be more, in a world that we're living in today, there should be more acceptance for stuff. Yeah, I mean, across uh, outside of the services, I think um, we've, we've spoke about it, but a lot more people should talk more, especially, I mean, amongst men, you know, that's why yeah. I, again, why Andy's Man Club is founded. You know, we all should talk a little bit more. And I think a lot of people have found it a lot harder through COVID. And no matter what level of the of society you're on, like you'll have struggled just as much as somebody that might've been on the breadline because, but your, your life will be different to theirs, but it, everyone's going to struggle for whatever reason to be isolated. Um, but I can't imagine being in the services or being like the, my, my sisters are, are uh, they both work in NHS, ICU nurses during COVID wearing PPE through the hottest yeah. summer. And I'm like, they deserve medal. I've never they said, do, it, yeah. I would never say it to her. Cause like it's my twin sister. I just take the piss out of her. But yeah. like, what, what do you look like us? her or does she look like you? We don't, we don't look that similar. <laughs> thankfully. And people are like, thankfully. are you identical? I'm like, no. <laughs> Would it be like suffering? Julius, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, like to, to think that people in those in those situations are um, are struggling and not getting support is it's just it's yeah. awful, isn't it? It's mad now as well because I think I mean I, I I'm not it's good it's obviously it's a great thing it's more, it's certainly more um, on on the social agenda now which is a fantastic thing but I I saw something the other day about um, you know prim, all Premier League football football clubs have uh, like a, a counselling 
a fully employed, um, there was a big deal about the first club to do it. And now I think they all employ, a, you know, a counselor on the, on the staff. So yeah. they can, all, and I think if you can get that at a Premier League football club, the, 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 the one place it should be is your frontline stuff like police, yeah. firemen, nurses on the front, frontline healthcare. I mean, you shouldn't, a lot of my friends work it in the NHS and you shouldn't just be getting a fucking plastic patch, right? Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that there are maybe initiatives to put it in place, but if there aren't, then I think everywhere, you know, should, for, for sure, it should be a priority to have that in every walk of yeah, life. I, I mean, like, that's a good example, really. Like you, you, you could easily look at uh, football players and go, what have they got to worry about? They're on a million pound a week or whatever. But like, it's not about the money, is it? Like there's yeah, pressures, the, they've got their own problems and pressures and especially as elite athletes. and nothing every, to do with money, is it? Like, yeah. every, I don't care how, how rich you are, how comfortable you are. Everyone, I think, especially when you get to a certain age, I think it's, uh, there's probably statistics on it affecting men that get to, what is it? To, I, I would imagine 21 to 20, or 21 to 30 is probably a big age when, when you know, you become aware of, things that kind of stress you out more, yeah, you have more yeah. responsibility at that age than you did when you were younger. Um, but yeah, it's nothing, I don't think it's anything to do with money. You could get worried about anything at any point in your life. I mean, especially like, like Ben says, you know, if, you, if you've lost relatives and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Well, I mean, what, what I wanted to touch on as well, we will come, we will come full circle to this. We'll talk about the podcast in a, in a little bit. So some more lighthearted stuff, yeah? yeah well, you, want, you told me it wasn't going to be harrowing today. It's not. Yeah. Well, it's this is right. light hearted. No, this is. The mental health stuff, yeah, but when you get into fatal, fatal oh, well, RTAs. Talk, yeah, I haven't talked about you that yet. You should have braced me for that. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, if you want uh, some of the stuff that Ben just spoke about there, if you go on Ben's channel, uh, just type in Ben Pierce on YouTube, um, some of the most viewed videos are the ones where you've spoke about the worst days of your life, yeah. um, which... It's, it's an amazing response, really, that you've opened yourself up to the public and put it out there, and the response has been overwhelming, hasn't it? So, like, the YouTube channel has been incredible, which we will talk about, but I want to talk about police interceptors. What was that like? What were it like to be... Because you're, you're you're still the poster boy. You know, yeah. like, if you're flicking through channels now, and it's like, police interceptors is coming on, it's you, and you stood there, yeah, you know. And you, baby you're ben, so, it? Yeah, you're so identifiable with the white streak in your hair, which people think you've died, and yeah. it's not. So <laughs> I thought I thought I was died at first. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I like this look. It's a unique look. But then, <laughs> ben, Josh told me that it's not like a, a, a decision, you know, it's just... Yeah, it's now I've got what's thing. called Wardenberg syndrome, which is a gene deformity. Um, so I'm technically an albino family. So I'm like the, the most left part of the albino family. So you're meant to have like white eyes and, and flashes in your hair and that sort of thing. So yeah. It's distinguished, it's, it's, I like it's it. It's bizarre. Um, yeah, it, so I never wanted to do it. I've always had massive issues with my confidence. Um, and when you look back, I, I was technically poorly when we, when we were doing it. So I think that's half the reason why my confidence was wa shaking. But Baby Ben did it, who was my partner at work. And he, every time we filmed traffic cops as well, I'd be in office. I was like, no, because everyone recognises me for having a white, white streak. Yep. And every time I went somewhere into a pub, oh, like, I don't know what it's like for you, but every time I went into a pub or a restaurant or whatever, I'd be a pig or you'd have to sit with your back to the wall so you could see exit entrances and you were you never sat with your back to some people. Uh, there were certain places you just never go when you got in a taxi. So I always used to wear a cap every time I went out. Like, say you went with your mates and you got back into going to a taxi, I'd put my uh, hood up or I'd put my cap on. So I just, oh, yeah, well, so is this where you live, officer? I didn't yeah, want any yeah. of that. Because I had it the other day, we got a Domino's. And as soon as we opened up, Domino's, I went, officer, oh, yeah. this is where you live. And I'm like, fuck. You, can you imagine? Like, you know, it's, like, it's like it's like fucking witness protection. Like now, so many people I think know where I live. I keep saying, Liz, I'm like, we've got to move. Yeah, like, yeah. All it takes is one of these psychos, yeah. one, of, one of these people to be a psycho. Yeah. And uh, in well, fact, we had the, the alarm went off like it, the other day and I went uh, down with my dick swinging. <laughs> Lynn's was like, you know, get it, she, the, the alarm goes off. I said, Adam, someone's downstairs. Like, it, it, nobody was there. But I was like, <laughs> jumped out of bed. And she, I, I went and started to go down the stairs and she's like, you know, I'm put some pants on. I'm like, they're going to be more terrified if I go down and I'm fucking nude. Can you imagine what it would look like? Can you imagine what it looked like? Remember the original Crazy Frog when he had a little willy? <laughs> yeah. That's what you look like. <laughs> I blew <blend> downstairs <laughs> like a crazy frog. <laughs> But, uh, well, how do we get onto that? Um, yeah, well, I, people I, know where you live. Yeah, I, I was yeah. about to say, like the whole public figure, public facing thing. Like I've said to you, like I, I don't, I wouldn't. I'd hate to be in your position. I'd hate to be in your position because you're recognised everywhere. But then for somebody to spot where you live, and yours is all right because you just uh, you just eat videos on eat videos on eat YouTube. Videos. Eat, yeah, you eat on YouTube. But being a police officer mm. and having potential criminals knowing where you yeah. live is like <sighs> yeah that's well that's that's what I, 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 but when you come out please rules and guidelines change because you don't worry about your job you just worry about protecting your family yeah where when you're in the job you worry about your job and being disciplined 
Um, so yeah, so I went out with Baby Benson's a lad called James, who was a um, really, really cool lad from like Cornwall, that sort of area. It was in a like, just just right chilled. And he went, come out, mate. Says, it's going to be, it'd be good. You'd have to speak. So Ben says, get in the car. I'll do all speaking. You just drive. So I did that. And then the first time you, you it's like this. You've got cameras around you in the car. You've got your little ba- uh, battery pack with mic on. Uh, passenger's got a camera on his shoulder. And then James in back. He says, every time you hear a blip, blip, it basically, you've seen something spin around. I'll just go. So cameras are rolling yeah. live in the car. And it took me about five minutes to get used to that. And then he was just breaking ice. And it just happened from there. And then I went out and he says, you're quite funny on camera, but what I was doing, I was, I was masking who I was. And then, but people seemed to like my sense of humour and like me being quirky. And it just ballooned. It went, it went, it was the highest viewed programme on Channel 5. Um, at the I had neighbours. Oh, Good mate, Lord. Yeah. It was, it was popular. Jason and, Jason, is it Daphne or whatever? Jason and... Kylie? Kyle, that's it. Kyle. I, I didn't watch it back then. I watched it for yeah. a brief moment in time. You liar. <laughs> I don't watch it now. You liar. <laughs> they're they're going to cancel it, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry. Go but on yeah, so I viewed on Channel 5, so and it, it's shown literally worldwide. So it's it's on Bravo, Paramount Forces, TV. It's on Channel 5, Channel 5 Catch-Up. It's on iPlay or whatever, all yeah, these yeah. things. And it's shown on every single channel. You can go around the world. My, my family live in Spain. They watch it in Spain. On So it's everywhere. And you didn't realise, so then as soon as it started getting aired, everything that we're getting from before, from the shits, it were positive. So yeah. you go out and rather than people shout pig, people coming up and just shaking your hand. And these were major wow. criminals. You were sat in car, like doing speed checks, and all of a sudden RS4 had pulled behind you and a massive nominal, a nominal's basically a, a big, big shit boy. You know, get out of the car and someone you dealt with for major organised crime, drug running millions of pounds or whatever. They'd get out of the car and say, oh, oh Ben, all right, I just want to shake your hand. Where before, they'd have probably oh, dragged the tip floor and kick in. And because they see you then as a person, they don't see the uniform. They see you then as the person. And it just went on and on. And all we're getting were people, can I have your autograph? Can I have your photo? Uh, can you come here and do a bit of a meet and greet? Can you do... And it was just sending me like to this place where I've never known because I'm, I'm, I'm a copper. Yeah. I just do my job, but people seem to like it. We had a, a supercar meet in Shipley um, for Leeds Supercars and we got told 3,000 people turned up, but 2,000 turned up to meet me and Steve Suggett. And there was there were my friends in this row of people that were ten deep having a queue. But then my mates, I'm having a beer with you later yeah, on in yeah. pub. But they were queuing just to have a photo. About, You've got loads of photos with me. Just go on Facebook and have a look. And yeah. oh no, but I want to meet you. And you are me. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bizarre concept. And it just went from there. And it skyrocketed. And it just never stopped. Do you enjoy the the process of being on TV? Um. <sighs> I, my kids watch it and they're like, oh, look, daddy's on TV. But do you like the, the, the act of being f- like filmed for a TV show? Do you like it? I fucking hate it. That's I, why I'm asking you. I, right. All right. I don't mind because the only thing I don't mind is because it's out of my comfort zone and I like being pushed in a new, I think yeah. you can become stagnant in life. Yes, and it's I, new. Yeah, it's so much new. So I like that. So I'd always wanted to have a, I did some acting before. Um, I did some stuff on Emmerdale and DCI Banks. The so, fuck out of town. You were on Emmerdale. Yeah, we're on Emmerdale. <laughs> I said we should get somebody on from Emmerdale. There we go, we've done it. I, I was aiming for like Eric Pollard, but... I tell, I, I tell Zach Dingle he's not coming on now. Um, so yeah, so I worked with all Emmerdale staff and first of all, I were a border agent and I did some police work and then I went to do other stuff, but we locked Marlon up and um, Paddy and all that, if you ever watch it, we locked all them up and we have a good crack with them all. You should so, have kept some fucking locked up Marlon would, and Paddy. I would, I would, I would, so it was just a really good time. So I thought I, I wouldn't mind doing that. So if I've always said if all this don't go... Like, and I, we don't do really, really well, which we will do. But I'm <laughs> saying if we don't, I want to try and, I want to try and go into acting room. I don't mind having a camera thrust in my face. The only thing that I, I, I'm aware of is everyone's trying to pick fault. Yeah. The bosses will sit there and review it. Yeah, yeah. And the bosses are like, right, if anyone says, oh, out of line, swearing, yeah. racial, homophobic, so-and-so, which you can't say anywhere. But if anyone gets the law wrong, if anyone gets the procedures wrong, yeah. if everyone talks in a derogatory term to a prisoner. You're thinking, fucking hell, I've just had a pursuit with this lad and he's kicking me in face. Yeah, and I'm a, saying, you're under get a microscope. the fuck down. Yeah. And he's saying, why have you swore? You would expect that. I mean, you would expect yeah. in a high t- attention, a, yeah. attention riddled scenario, you would probably swear. Yeah. yeah. And, but, then, um, um, and then public. So public hmm. are then on here. And then it's like, have you seen this? You've done that. Oh. And what they do is, is like, they think this is a massive conspiracy. So Channel 5 will sit with bosses. And they'll filter out all beatings, all Rodney King beatings that we do. You know, pulling people over and slapping them about and hanging them off edge of cliffs. That'll all get cut out and we'll only show the light out of this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. it doesn't work like that. If it's on the tape, 
and we've fucked up. It's been signed and it's been it's going to be used. Yeah, yeah but yeah. if it's on the tape as well, I'm and it, I'm disciplined straight yeah, away yeah. because don't forget we've got body cameras on mm-hmm. which are recording. In cars got body uh, is all our CCTV. And then as soon as we get in, involved in a pursuit, it logs on into the control room, police control room. Yeah. So you're sat there saying, yeah, police, uh, pursuit's authorised. Are uh, you wearing your tactical authorisation code as practice? Blah, blah. And their screen flashes up. So you can't be like, 130 miles an hour, and not screen 155. Yeah. It's safe to continue bodies flying over car. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're all like, whoa, 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 a bar. And then first thing they'll do is like, Take his permit. So they're not like your best buddies. Yeah, yeah. They're literally like civilians. They're, they're keeping you honest. They're keeping. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. And so they're in there. And the civilians that are running the TPAC guidelines, they're not bobbies. It'll yeah. go to another old bobby who's in control of firearm stuff. But for TPACs, it's a civilian. So and they'll be like, right, report him, get him onto ISP or ISO or PCC or whatever it is. So it's like that's the pressure. Yeah, yeah. That's the I've got to abide by. It. Well, I will abide because that's my job. But that's what the pressure the is. Scrutiny of it. And yeah. I imagine that um, c- compared to what you've done in television versus that, like he's just doing his job and somebody's almost like vlogging it. Whereas like y- if you're going on a step in on a set, it's like two worlds apart. It, yeah, I suppose I, I think I was getting, you, it, I, what I, well, one of the things I hear about is like, you know, people retaking, you've got a director and whatnot. Yeah. But I suppose if you're in pursuit of a criminal, I can't be like, wait, can you do that really cool turn again? Yeah. I can, I, I can confirm that Ben's never going to become an actor because I've watched him try and do a six second ad read for some sponsors <laughs> and fucking hell. Like, to say there's about four words in it. Can you bollocks get that out? It's, it's like 30 minutes, <laughs> it's like 60 like seconds. S- silent cinema, maybe. And if that becomes uh, can, popular again. I, all you have to do is just say, if just add the come in here and lock beard up. I'd be yeah. like, all right, then, yeah, so, right, Adam, and I could just do that, but yeah, if he yeah. said, right, can you do these three lines? Uh, no. Well, I, I suppose that's a nice little tangent to move on to then. Um, so post uh, post your police career, how how did you get into, how did you end up on my doorstep? That's that's the, that's the a, a tale that I've not really asked you, like, I know the phone call that I got, but how did you end up sort of leaving the police and then sort of... I don't know if you remember that when I warned you, I caught you in red light area. And says, you're not my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was in, you know, the red light districts in Leeds? No, I don't. No, no. the... Re- <laughs> So if I cop- <laughs> <laughs> what? I, well, I used to work down there. Like, there's a bit water lane. I don't, ah. It's not really a red, a red light district, but there are a lot of prostitutes down there, sex workers down there, right? Um, I remember once I was driving a, a play game of five a side, and I stopped at a cash machine, right? To get it's getting dark. It's probably, I think it was about seven o'clock, and I was stopped at a cash machine, and I'm there in this my old like I had this Daihatsu Copen, which I've talked about before. It's like a little noddy car, <laughs> and I get out to use. Uh, oh no, but my friend got out to use some. I'm driving. He got out to get some cash, and there's this old uh, old prostitute. And she comes, she's like, "Are hey, you looking for a good time, love?" And I'm like, "Get the fuck in the car!" <laughs> I thought like, what, that, so "You said that's her." Get in the car. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you, cheeseburger. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I remember thinking, Fuck, that's actually a line they use. Like, you're looking for a good time. I thought it was like a cliche, but yeah, yeah that's good. Do you want shit, business, I mean. love? Uh, so basically what it Sorry. was, I'm friends with, <laughs> friends with Danny Myler from Pulse Radio. Um, and I I just wanted to start some sort of podcast. I just wanted to talk. I just wanted to do this. I wanted to hang out. I just think it, there's a vibe of just chatting to people and getting to know people. Uh, and nothing to do with, with mental health, but I just think with being in the police, you just... You're under a dome and I want to meet people. I want to meet people that, yeah, all right. And they might've done something wrong in their life years ago and being locked up, but now they teach young kids out of box. Yeah. And they're like, and I just want to grow as a person. So I spoke to Danny and I just said, I wouldn't mind doing something like podcasting, but I've got no idea. Like I'm a complete technophobe. I don't have a clue. I've probably got a VHS at home somewhere in, and that's what I do. I, I, I don't get stuff. So I didn't understand what a podcast was. So Danny says, oh, I've got a mate called Josh. I'll put you in contact. So we had a bit of a FaceTime, didn't we? Told Josh a story and he went, I think we need to get it in and I think you need to get on camera. Now, when I came in, again, this world is completely and utterly new and bizarre to me. I just think it's like, it's not a dream. I don't feel like I'm living a dream, but I just feel like I'm living a good style of, um, I, I'm going to say this all wrong now. <laughs> a, a good, I'm, I'm, I'm living, I'm being a poorly bloke, I'm living a good life. Yeah. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. That's where good. A lot of people, I remember my dad saying to Tyler years ago, he says, w- worst thing is, is waking up every day and thinking, I hate going to work. I hate that feeling of going to work. Feeling where now work. it's, I wake up and I'm, I, I like this morning, I woke up and I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy to come to work. I'm happy to come meet people. I'm happy to come meet yourself. I'm happy to come meet new people and experience new things because I think that's how you grow as a person. It's such an extreme as well to go from, uh, we've all had like real jobs, you know, like 
nine to five, you know, yours is even more extreme than a police officer doing 12 hour shifts. And, uh, you know, you do four on four off or whatever it would be. And you end up month, you get your, your, your paycheck and that's life, you know? Yeah. But then what we do now, you know, we, we, we don't take it for, we can't take, we don't take it for granted, but sometimes you, you can sort of, it can, it can weigh on you a little bit, but then you realize fucking hell, what do we do for a living? We actually make videos and put them on YouTube to entertain people. And we, we yeah. you know, our day, although we'd be busy, we have, we're in full control of it. When you work for somebody else, you're not in control of it. So I think for, for you, the extremes of going from 12 hour shift police officer for 19 years to seeing this side of it, where like, you know, we don't get sons dirty. It would, would, you know, it's hard work, but it, it's nothing no, no, it's compared like, to what you do. Yeah, but I will, I will fuck just today. And yeah, then four yeah. hour fucked after a podcast. And but well, I literally. Oh yeah, I went home and I, I like no no. I was looking at him. No. I was looking but, at him and said, I don't get that treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give a reach round though? <laughs> Let's not get into that. Um but yeah, it's like um I always thought this is the way I look at life. My dad always came from a building background. My brother same. I always thought you had to have calluses on your hands. You have to dig a hole. I've got those. <laughs> I'm also playing the drums and guitar and lifting weights, that's all. <laughs> all right. Um, but I always thought that's how you earn your money. Yeah. I never understood there were a life out there that people like could be a solicitor, or a state agent. And I saw there was a job, but where people could be paid for the brain rather than doing a physical job. Yeah. And, I, and now I, I think it's weird that people can get paid from being an entertainer than doing a physical job. And it's just bizarre, but I love it. I love the thought of talking. I love the thought of meeting. I love the thought of traveling or... I, this is why I'm, I think I'm growing as a person more and more every day and I'm becoming more accepted to life out there. Because like you said, when you deal with things, like you said, that we, we won't talk about, but you sometimes think the world's 95% crap and 5% good. Where well, I'm all the way around now. The world's 95% good and 5% crap. And like I said, you look at news and they're baffling just putting stuff on news. I think just trying to entertain you. There's a lot going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. But you're thinking like, do I really want to know? Do I not want to know? Do well, I want to grow with it? Do that's I one thing you said to me when uh, we first met, where that, like, you know, you spent 20 years of your life w working with the, the sort of dregs of society, thinking that world's bad. So 90% of the people you meet are, are there to try and harm you or yeah. do harm on others. Whereas like, as a regular person, we, we very rarely see criminal acts. So we'd go like, well, the world is 99% good and just that 1% bad. Yeah. Um, and just to bridge that, so like I got the phone call with Danny Milo and, um, so, yeah, you wanted a podcast. Like you said, you are a technophobe. When I, when sometimes when we're messaging back and forth on WhatsApp or on FaceTime, and it's almost like FaceTiming me, eight to five year old granddad. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, yeah, he told me some of his stories, and I, I was like, this isn't a podcast. You know, like you described what you wanted to do, and it wasn't a podcast. You wanted to get your stories out there. And I was like, all I could compare it to was Lad Bible, 18 Minutes with Joe Rogan's clips. I was like, that's what it needs to be. It needs to be you sort of bearing your soul. And and, and I, I, initially the plan was, let's get let's set you up a channel, like the full work, banner, picture, get you a few videos re, uh, recorded. And it was just to get you off your off your feet, really. That was the plan. And we released the first video and the second video. And within a week, it were uh, over a thousand subscribers, more than 4,000 watch hours, monetized. Um, you're away, you, you know, you, you've got traction. So at that point we had to go, there's a there's a, an appetite for it. Let's let's keep it going, uh, which is sort of pushed on to then as going from doing your heavy stories talking about the police, and then we've put in reaction videos to when you were on interceptors, uh, and now into podcasting. So we've eventually got there. Your initial plan was a podcast. <laughs> it's just gone around hours a little bit. Yeah, how's it how's it been for you to like? What's the transition been like from being a police interceptor, police officer, being on na on national television to YouTube, like, what's the difference being? What like? the fuck? Are the books down there? You didn't tell me that. <laughs> we could have put that up on a desk. What the books? Ben's book. Yeah, yeah, they're both down there. You didn't tell me that. All right, uh, Adam, both books are down there. We'll, we'll show Sorry, them. Sorry, just, just, <laughs> just looking down. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Did you sleep last night? You've come in. <laughs> no, like, no, your energy's no, been no, weird no, today. No, you know. Like, Sorry, it, it, honestly, it's been proper. Like, you came in buzzing. You're normally a little bit lethargic, and then like you've been full of it. I, I, ate, I ate a lot yesterday. My, my, <laughs> the, the, the electrolytes will be a bit off. Sorry, go, go on. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yo, honestly, man. <laughs> Sorry, go on, Ben. I just think I remember when you told me before uh, TV's technically dead or on its way out in theory because everyone's going onto a um, online thing. You can go yeah. online now and you can look because I've never looked as a YouTube as much as what I look at now. Yeah, like you've taught me. I always thought YouTube what I like if you wanted to fix your sink, 
you'd put on why is my tap dripping it was that sort of format that's why youtube were invented and then i started watching stuff like woman who falls over breaks a leg you know for a bit of like hearted stuff. <laughs> that sounds really like hearted, yeah, physical, bodily damage. Yeah, but no, it's like, like, army, fail you know, army. Yeah, 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 that sort I of thing. That, yeah. And then I just started thinking like, there's a world out there. So everything that I've missed or wanted to know, I just put in and it was there. And, yeah. I, and, this, and this is like only two years ago or a year ago. And I'm like 45, 46. And I think I've missed out on so much time. And I'm trying to absorb all that in. Do you get recognised more now than yeah. you did at Interceptors? Yeah, massively. It says a lot about YouTube. It's a lot about the power of, uh, of of YouTube, yeah. I think everything's going that way. And the, the only te- the only people that do are the mainstream family TV watchers that I watch, Corey and Emmerdale, yeah. who see or who or Love Island crap or whatever it is. <laughs> um, or, do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. Or daytime Holly and Summit TV, Holly yeah, and Foot yeah, TV. Yeah. But the rest of the people, the, it's like a, a, a generation gap. So I don't know what it's like with you, Adam. But the people, like you said, you're having kids, literally kids speak to you. And you're thinking like, have you watching my videos? You shouldn't be in there. Oh yeah, I've watched this. And you're thinking like, you're 10 year old. Yeah. You shouldn't really be watching that. But no, this is what we do now. And then you released a video, you stay in the, the, someone's product. Is it weird that I'm watching this about fire brigade and I'm actually sat in a fire engine or something like that. And it's like, uh, you recognize more because there's, there's those two gaps now, rather yeah. than be the, the people that only watch TV, there's both sides. So you're going for all ages rather than you're going for one set of demographic. And I think that's what I think is bizarre because, like I said, it can be anyone at like either rich or poor. It can be anyone from any any culture, any background. It can be any person, any age, yeah, and that, they recognise you. That's the weird thing about your channel, man. It's so big that, that like you couldn't nail the demographic for his channel because every like any walk of life watches Adam eat, which is yeah. it's so strange. It could be a lawyer, it could be a football player, it could be whoever. Everyone, as so like you talk about Joe Gelhart there. Because he, 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 the guy we, tra- I think I, I thought it was a reference to because uh, there was a guy called he plays for League United. Oh yeah, he sent me. A, uh, he DM'd me. DM'd <laughs> um, yeah. he, he sent me a, a message. Just, uh, I think it was a picture of him just watching my videos. DM him back and be like, No, I, no, I did. On. I said I, I said something I thought was humorous back to him, but then I said, Oh, you do want to come to the podcast? He fucking pie faced me. <laughs> That's probably because he's, he's, he's in the first team now. I think that's probably what it is. Yeah. But Joe, if you're watching. Uh, yeah, come. We'd love to have you here. And talk to, or just send one of the youth players. <laughs> if, you, if you're too busy, B team. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. What do you think it is? Like I said, were you Adam? Then as in, with me, they like to hear. Yeah, they like to hear bad stories, but they like to hear fun stuff and the adventure. That because a lot of people wanted to. Oh, I want to be a cop, or I want to drive that traffic car. And a lot of people think when they see the traffic police, that that's why there's so many programs on about the police. I think it's like you can drive fast in normal roads. You can do this. You can do that. Because I look at some of the stuff you do in the food you eat, and I think I'd love to smash like banoffee pies. I smash all day long, <laughs> but having That's ten pound, them. having ten pound up, and I'll, yeah, I'd be like, oh god. I mean, I yeah. go for a good steak, and after a steak, he's thinking I'm ruined. I need yeah. to go on my bed. Um, if it's, do you think it's because the the amount, or do you think it's because no. the color, co- quality of the food? Do you think? Let's not make this about me. I, 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 I don't know why people watch my video. I think it's I don't I certainly don't. It's, I think just food anchors it and whatnot. But it's more that people just find it entertaining. It's something about my personality. I think people find that's why people come back. I think anyway. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the food. Anyway, what, what you what you gonna we gonna move on to something? No, no. no oh, I would let you ca- carry on. Can I can I just ask a couple of things? Yeah. That I got. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I made some, some more random looks. outbursts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not, not really a structured podcast. I realised, but I was gonna. One thing I want to know is: um, is there like a strength slash fitness requirement for entering the police? I realise we're kind of going back to the policey stuff now, but is there? Yes. What's it? Because I, I I remember one of my mates wanted to join the. I, I don't know why. If he's watching wigs, if you're watching. That's his nickname, by the way, not his real name. <laughs> um, is he wear a wig? No, his second name is Wignall. Oh, right. like right. a Viking name or something. But anyway, he wanted to. He had this pipe dream that he wanted to dra- join the fire brigade. He's like eight stone, wet through. Um, but God bless him. He, he, you know, he, he looked at all the requirements. Of what I, I think I remember it being really underwhelming. Like you had to, you didn't have to do a, like a free weights because obviously you're a fireman. But a bit different to police. But one thing you'd have to probably do is pick up somebody of average body weight, drag them out of the house, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, the the requirement, I don't know if it's the same now. Somebody tell me in the comments if it's different. But it was something like you had to leg press on a machine, like 60 kilos for 10 reps. And I'm thinking, I'd, like my sister could probably do that. You know, that's, that's not that, that's not really practical yeah. for what it is. is. Is there anything like that for the cops? Yeah. The, so when I joined, it was, some, I think it was 9.5 on bleep test, which were quite hard mm. at the time. That it, is hard, man. It was 30 plus, you had to do over 30 press ups in a minute. 
over 60 sit-ups in a minute, something like that. It, it was somewhat That's bizarre. Weird. Why the fuck are you sit-ups? Uh, like well, exactly. Place? It was um, a, a stride test, like jumping over a gap, how far you had to get over a certain meterage. There were grip strength tests. There were body fat tests. There were all sorts of stuff to do. And now you just got to turn up. Now, literally, you just turn up and they're like, right, you're in. Oh, wow. It's literally gone down to like 4.5 or 5.2. It's literally just not even a really a run. It's like a stride. I suppose it depends on like re- it, what, what you're... Sorry to interrupt. I, oh. I was just thinking it probably depends on what... I mean, like if you're a, a like line of duty kind of like high up detective, it's, you probably don't want to be that fit, do you? But like if you... I suppose if you're a beat cop... Um, I, they probably don't call it that, but you know that's yeah, what I'm no, thinking. Don't, I watched Untouchables last night, or right. the, not the night before with Sean Cut. You oh, know, it's brilliant. I've seen it about 15 times, but it's great. And he's like, "I'm just a poor beat cop." <laughs> but anyway, he, um, mastered. Yeah, if you, do, if you do, is that Sean Bean? If, if, you're, uh, if you're doing that, you probably. I would imagine. I would have thought you need some kind of kind of a minimum strength. Yeah, strength. I would. Have, I would say probably strength least. and fitness, and maybe like self defense. You know, like yeah, you, you're going to come up against. So when, uh, again, back to what saying. So when I joined. Your self-defense war weeks and weeks and weeks. You had a full week on cu- just cuffing techniques. They were all different stacks. They're all different cuffing so you- techniques. Yeah, <laughs> so like or cuffing. Yeah, cuffing. Not, not cuffing. You're not no. back at red light district yet. No, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but God. yeah, there were all these different cuffing techniques. Take down with cuffs. Yeah, they're all sorts of stuff. And now it's one so basically one cuffing technique. And before it were all sorts of locks, takedowns, holds. And like I said, from a, a martial arts background, there were all sorts of different little things that they were teaching you in weeks and weeks and weeks of right training. Uh, and, and now it's literally, it's gone to nothing. It's literally nothing. That seems bizarre because like, you'd think the, the, the force would would have a duty of care of the officer to put them in, in harm's way to at least arm them with the basics to potentially look after but themselves. If you, I'm thinking on, on the other end of the, the scale. Just before I joined, you had to be like, Six foot two. And have a tash. You said six foot yeah. two and a tash. Six fucking two, bullshit, man. There shouldn't be a minimum ah, height. Ah, 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 he said when he walked in, he went, God, he is small, isn't he? It's <laughs> fucking right, he is, yeah. Do I, do we mention on the podcast I, I measure myself? Did, or did I just talk to you? I think you just told me. I, I, I got so sick of these jokes, right? That I, it was brief tangent. That sister Lindsay, I was like, have we, got a, have we got a tape measure? She's like, yeah, downstairs. I was like, right, we, I'm getting, I'm, I'm measuring myself. Because I always thought it was 5'10", because I got measured by a doctor way back when. I was 5'10". This is when I'm really young. And uh, I'm, I'm five nine, right? So I'm probably five ten with shoes on. Right? <laughs> and then I googled like the average height for a man in England. It's five eight, so I'm above average height. So anyway, get on. Ben to and it. I are six two. Yeah. Yeah, you got that tall person syndrome. You know, you get like over six feet, and you're like, oh, I'm a bit of a giant. I can't really get on planes because I'm too big. Like, I've got to buy my clothes at Giacomo. <laughs> it's four inches in it, yeah, rather than baby gap. <laughs> I always say six, like six, it's six, infectious. <laughs> it's going to be killing the levels, that man. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, six two and a tash, you were at all. Yeah. but like that. So and then things were old. When I say old school, but people won't have that nowadays. Yeah, there's all this different generation where you've got to be. It's got to be everyone yeah, gets insulted. Everyone, everyone, everyone so yeah, it's yeah. got to be out for everybody. It's got to be fair for everybody. It's got to be. I think it should so, be inclusive, but yeah. I think I would have I've thought surely like once you get in there, you need. A, I mean, you can't be running around after people if you're not. Because yeah, I mean, the reality of it is, if it, the reality of it is, if if you end up in a sticky situation, you know, as inclusive as you may be, if you if you are not strong enough to overpower a person or have the skills to overpower or at least cuff them in different techniques, if you first one, that's what it's a bit like yeah. martial arts, isn't it? Like yeah. you're armed with various techniques, depending on where you end up in a situation, whether you're on your back or you're on top. You know, you stood up. <laughs> What's your face? <laughs> <Not, laughs> <not, laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, if you if you only know how to cuff somebody stood up, and you know they're on the floor or you're on the floor, you, you bollocks that because you haven't yeah. got that in your arsenal. But I don't, what I don't think they want to do, I don't think they want that. This is me personally now. I don't think they want that. We I want, don't think they want conflict. I don't think they want use that's of the, force. That's I, the reality, I, though, I, isn't I, it? Yeah, like, but you've I, seen I, it first. I hand. think we've gone to a situation, an area where we don't want it. Like certain divisions or certain uh, forces are putting in an open suit policy. So literally, you can go rob a bank, no balaclava or no, go rob a bank, steal a car, traffic's there, and they're like, oh, no, you can't oh, steal I a car. That. I heard that on a podcast in America. And like, Literally, they'll have no, certain areas, they'll have no pursuit policy, but yeah. they won't bring it in, no pursuit policy, but what they'll do is they'll itemise stuff so you can't drive your BMW over 100 mile an hour. Yeah. So then there's someone, and you're thinking like, what? I think that's, that's really annoying because I think the most fun part of being a, a cop would be chasing motherfuckers. I love that, <laughs> yes. like in the movies. Yes. I mean, I, I know it's dangerous and shit, but I bet it'd be... 
I'd love to just, I mean, I'm not really that quick off it. So well, that, that's why everyone likes watching it. Like I enjoyed watching the interceptors for that reason. Like you see Ben like behind a, a BMW and he's chasing somebody and, and then they jump out and they're just, like smash into the ground. You're arrested, you dickhead. You know, like that's I'd love class. To, like, just chase you down th- through Morley. I've Me. seen it. Stop telling people where, where it's going to be. <laughs> 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 chase you through Morley and just fucking pure spear you into the ground. Me? <laughs> Probably yeah. knocked my shoulder out. <laughs> just getting that a few times, I tell you. He's so aggressive towards me. I don't understand. Yeah, I'm why. only messing around. You'd, I, I don't think I've had a, I'd have any chance to. I'm not really that quick. Yeah, I'm pretty slow. Um, yeah, I mean, like that's why I, that is the appeal of, of uh, interceptors, isn't it? Like you get to see first. You're in in the cab with us, so like we're safe, just watching yeah. it all unfold. <laughs> that's gonna be. I hope it cuts that angle when you're looking. Just like checking the time on it. You know, it's yeah, so we're, we're just rocked over an hour. Um, that's alright I'm, no, I'm enjoying it people like the longer ones yeah I was going to say I, you, you were talking about like um, putting restrictions in place and I, I listened that might have been a Joe Rogan podcast and they were on about like defunding areas of the police and what they'd said is in one area it might have been Los Angeles they were like you, you can't get arrested now for um, a theft under the value of like a thousand dollars Yeah. so like corner stores and and, and retail shops if, if the value of the item is under a thousand dollars there's 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 no consequence. You can just nick it. So people are just walking into corner shops and just being like, yeah, cheers. Thanks. Or going into a retail store and taking it. So they're like, there were one like corner shop owner that changed the value of everything to like $1,001. So <laughs> you know, like a pack of chewing, a pack of chewing was like $1,001. And like, if you nick it, you can actually bail the police. How cr- it's mental. That's crazy. Like Los Angeles at the minute is, is because of COVID and, and everything that's going on. I saw um, like a, Joe Rogan again shared something where it were um, the the trains that take Amazon parcels to you know across the country. Oh, where they got they were getting robbed. Yeah, but there were no police to stop it. So the yeah. train tracks were just covered in litter and unopened parcels because open yeah. the the obviously they must have slowed down. Again, it's like I suppose it's like if you can slow the train down, the it's like olden days, and it's like cowboys and That's cowboys I mean, yeah. jumping on. Yeah, jump on, just take the parcels, open them, take the loot, and then they're off. And they wouldn't want any police to to, to stop it. It's, it's a mental. This is where you, you think about where budgets come in. But like we've always said, this I can't understand why things like the NHS have a budget. Yeah, I just don't understand that. We create. I don't understand how the, if you might basically go. Oh, you can't do that because. Uh, Okay, one thing we're not going to confirm on this podcast yeah. is how to run the country because we are. I think the idea is don't, why, don't get me in, don't, don't give me that topic. When you run the country, <laughs> when you run the country, why such as things like the NHS? Oh, we don't have any money for cancer patients. We don't. Yeah, have yeah, yeah. Why don't you have? Why can't you make the money? You are Bank of England. It's not Bank of Germany. It's Bank of England. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to stop you because we will go down a rabbit hole of, <laughs> yeah. of, of inflation. He knows I'm going to get a chip on that. That's yeah, all like, I was just saying. But budget shouldn't be an issue for emergency yeah, yeah. services. And I think that's one of the main things is everything's on a budget and they've got to cut budgets in one sector for another sector. It's like inflation's just got to, this is the last thing we'll say about this. Inflation's gone up, right? Uh, Bank of England have raised their interest rates and what they've said, the guy that runs the Bank of England has gone on telly and said, business owners and, and private sector do not increase your salaries to meet the inflation because then we'll just have to increase it again. So imagine that. So it's going to cost you more to live and the dude on telly is going... Right, just don't give people more money because it kind of defeats the object, which makes sense, but it doesn't really solve the problem. Yeah. So I'm like, well, so what do we yeah, do with pro- Yeah, let's get off here. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, no, we're not going down. Pivot. Yeah. Ben, the podcast. So let's talk about don't, your- before Before we get into this, don't let me forget, because we're going to do a fun sec- segment about like our, our respective brushes with the law. Oh, let's do that now. Can, do do that can now? we um, can we have a quick wee break? Because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you, you bought me a, a giant- Oh, I'm gagging for a piss. All right, transition. Right, so I, I'll go first, right? So I've, I've got like two little stories. First one is pretty, um, I don't know, it's probably run of the mill. Um, I want to I get a, a, cop's, a, a cop's insight on this. So I'm out with a friend, right? This is a long time ago. He's a bit of a booze hound. He's like the Barney Gumball of the group, right? He's almost always pissed. But anyway, <laughs> he's a good lad, right? But, but anyway, we're, we're out and um, we, we were on the way home, right? After a night out, um, we're near, near a taxi ramp. We're not queuing. And he's like, oh, I desperately need to piss. So he kind of walks off somewhere which isn't really secluded because it's next to a main road, but it's kind of in a corner out the way and he starts taking a piss, right? Sure enough, it gets a, I'll tell you where it was. Do you know where the the, um, the Grand is in Leeds? Bottom of Merrion Street kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, I know where that's, It's like, yeah. it's a one-way street, isn't it? But it's a dual carriageway. Do you know what yeah. I mean? As you go down. Anyway, I, I, I turn around, I see this police car coming up. I'm like, oh shit, don't see him and stop. Wrong time, wrong place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they get out and to the credit of the, the cops, they're, they're just giving him a bit of a talking to, you know, and he's he's a really meek dude. So he's like, I'm really sorry, officer. I'm sorry. Like, I just really need to piss. I'm sorry. And I'm like, I, I wasn't quite as drunk at the time. I'm like, he's, you know, he's not a bad dude. He's just, 
we've, we've all done it, you know, and you're <laughs> yeah, desperate, yeah. To, to, desperate to go and they're like, all right, well, you wouldn't like somebody pissing on your, uh, you know, outside your house, would you? I'm thinking, well, it's not outside the house, but you have a good, you have a valid point. <laughs> so what, what, if in that scenario, what do, you, what do you think you would, if you, if you had been like on, you know, in, you'd stopped uh, and you'd seen somebody peeing outside, would you have just given them a talking to Oh yeah, definitely, much? we've had it hundreds of times. I just think people, a lot of people do get caught short and I have been caught short myself and I've had a pee in a park, but I, I haven't done it where people can see. And urban areas yeah, kind of Yeah, urban areas is different. But I just haven't done it where people can see because there is enough places to go down like either a back alley or just yeah. away from front road. He didn't, he didn't really. He was just in a corner next to a massive queue of people, so, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I've had it where um, I, I do know one person, I won't, ever, I won't ever say, but I've been where they've peed outside someone's house. And literally <laughs> it's like a... Um, do you know in London sometimes you have houses where you'd probably go downstairs to the front yeah, yeah. of the house it's yeah. like sub built or you want to yeah, call yeah. it so they've peed and technically it's gone over the top into there and they did it on purpose like they were a few but rather than going somewhere else they peed it so I just said what do you want to do so kid took his top off and mopped it up with his top oh. <laughs> so he was like well Fair play to kid, he's took his stuff off, he's mopped it up. It's on someone's front door. It's yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's really easy. That's right. You're probably not going to get arrested for that. Are you? No, I would this imagine. Is what I'm saying, unless, like, yeah. you, unless you kind of give the the cop a bit of grief. No. Um, right. The second one is a little bit more. I've got, probably got three actually, but I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Go on. Short, this is a short one, right? So I remember again, I'd been out. With, I've, this sounds like I'm hanging around with vagabonds. It's not, I'm not really. <laughs> but I remember we were out one night after uh, you've been down at the cockpit, which sadly is now closed. Yeah. In You're all right in that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I keep thinking it's, I think they're closed because it was structurally unsound, but if that's a lie, Somebody tell me if it's for sale. I, I'd like maybe like post YouTube. I could, I could reopen it. Yeah, I'd you're fucking gonna love to do bring that. Bring it to life. I don't have enough money right now, but maybe one day. But anyway, we've been there. Do you remember there's, there's a queue? Uh, you could never get a taxi outside there, right? You had to go to the train station where yeah. there's that big yeah. long queue, or there used yeah. to be. It's still there, yeah. Yeah, and I remember you, we'd be, on Friday, Saturday night, be heaving. You'd be waiting 20 minutes for a taxi. And we're in this queue, and uh, I'm there with a friend of mine who'd never, he, like, he's a he's fun, funny bloke, but pretty sh- reserved, you know, intro, not an introvert, but he wouldn't say much to anyone. And he, but he was a bit pissed, and we're in this queue, and a copper walks by. I remember, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, he was a Geordie, and he just walks by this queue of people, just kind of seeing what's going on. And my mate, like, in one kind of movement, as if to disguise it as a cough, just kind of went, <laughs> 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 and I just looked at him, and you're like, when you look at a mate in class, like, you're trying not to laugh, but I'm just like, the fuck have we done that for? So obviously the cop turns around, but he didn't see. And to, to the credit of kind of almost, well, not to the credit, but everyone in the group probably knew who it was, but didn't sell him out. No so he's looking around. He's like, I'll read, who's done that then? And he's looking down the queue. And Where we're from? Jamaica. <laughs> that, was, that was me going for Johnny. I'll read, who's done that then? I'll read, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, so he didn't find out. And we, he, got, he got away scot-free. But like, if you... If that had happened to you, like in a queue of people, you didn't know who it was, would you... I'd, igno- I'd ignore it. Because I just think you're going to look a bigger dick. But I, I also, back to it, if I did know it was, I'd always have a saying so. You know what I mean? Because I just think... Did my talk to what's the point? Yeah, because like I said, this. let's be honest, all the insults you can come out with when you're coming out with pig. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll give you another idea. We're on a, um, I were on a motorcycle duty. Yeah. And so we're on a police bike and I was behind the bus and there were kids on top of the bus. They're on like 13. And like, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I've seen an allergy, you know, where yeah. it's like, it's under the thing. <laughs> yeah. you. But they're like, fuck off, fuck off. And then one went, like, and put his nose against the window. Right, put the lights on, woo, 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 put bus over. And it was one of these proper allocated school buses. Yeah. And I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> so I said, driver, stop there. So driver, right, open, open door, straight up to the top deck. So I says, everyone from these seats here, I says, you're all off bus. And they're like, what? And one of them were a Bobby's son. Ooh. And then he wanted to know why his son were up late from work. So he had to say, I got kicked off bus. And what do you get kicked off bus for? And he says, this is what I did. And his dad went fucking ballistic with him. So I, all the kids up from a certain row, I says, right, off the bus, you walk in. So it's like, oh, it's not my fault. <laughs> but you're there. Could you so imagine I'm, being like a, a, a 13 year old and you're like, you're trying to be cool up back seat. You're like, yeah, fuck off, pig, like this. that copper comes on you'd be like oh my god oh, I am shit. gonna get absolutely <laughs> smashed here yeah. I've got a better story for you Let me give it my third and final story right. this is actually quite a good one it's really hammering it down now yeah if you, you can, can hear, if you can hear the tippy tappy yeah Eunice has made an appearance it's not even tippy tappy is it? it's like <laughs> waves of water hitting the, but yeah this is a good one right so I remember I was, I was, I was young right was, I think well I, I was probably early 20s just before I met Lynn so maybe early 20s yeah. say 23 or something and I was at home and uh, heard a knock at the door I saw a car pull up but blinds are closed right the car pulls up, knock at the door. My mum's in the kitchen. 
my mum says the door, it's, it's uh, two men. She, she opens the door, she's like, I'm, I think I was sat in my pants actually at the time because I sit in the house just in my boxes, just in my briefs and t-shirt. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's besides the point. She comes and she says, Adam, I've got two police officers here that want to talk to you, want to ask you some questions. I'm thinking, fuck. Have I don't like don't something when I'm, I'm pissed on like a Tuesday night or whatever. Just, <laughs> I, I don't know. Kicking um, wimmers off. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, would never have done that. But thinking, oh, have I don't, you know, you question yourself. Have I yeah. done something? And they came in, and at this time, I was driving um, a Mini Cooper, you know, like the the new new version, not yeah. like a booted old one. And it had Pac-Man decals on the roof. I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, this is a, not a cool car, really. But I think that's me. You know, it's white, it's a bright yellow. It's got the Pac-Man game board on the top with the. Uh, this is relevant. I, I promise. <laughs> It's got like Pac-Man and the girls chasing around. With it. Anyway, they said, um, we're, uh, we're investigating uh, details of a, uh, we're investigating uh, a woman had reported basically being trying to, somebody had tried to get her into a car and it had been a spate of similar things that had happened um, in East Lee, uh, sorry. In, Not where, where, area. Where no, I no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> East Lee's where my mum used to live and stuff. And um, somebody had tried to get her into, in, into this car, right? And um, said, we need to ask you a few questions. Uh, the long and short of it was, um, were you going down this York Road, which you know York Road yeah, is connects yeah, yeah. the big road, um, on the, this date and time? And I'm thinking in my head, I was like, "Fucking yeah, I was actually." So I said to him, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was because they, they said like between eleven and three, and I was going. To, I remember I'd gone to the gym. I said, "Yeah, I, I was actually." So they told me a, few, a bit because they obviously got to keep it vague. So they, yeah. you know, so they tell me so they try to get someone in the car. She's escaped, and she's told him about it and whatnot, and. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't know officer, I promise. I was just going to the gym. <laughs> so they tell, me, they tell me a bit more about it. And then she said, yeah, because yeah, she reported, that the victim reported that um, somebody tried to get her into a, a, a creep, like a coffee colored mini. And I remember just thinking, well, I, I don't want to tell you how to do your job officer, but my mini is bright yellow, covered in Pac-Man <laughs> artwork. Yeah. I feel like they probably would have, and they, one of them, like, to be fair, one of them was totally like, the other one laughed a bit, chuckled a bit. He was like, yeah, we, we've just got to kind of go around the house and do, you know, <laughs> people that fit the description for owning a mini, which is somewhere between yellow and brown. We, yeah. So I don't know how it happened, but I admit the funniest part about that was, um, they, so they left, you know, obviously I'm not guilty. I didn't try getting anyone into my Pac-Man mini. Um, it's not the kind of car you would commit crime in, is it? Right? <laughs> but um, a few weeks later, um, I remember it was April 1st, right? And I text my mum. <laughs> I said, mum. I mean, uh, do you know, you know, Killenbeck, right? Yeah. I said, I'm in Killenbeck police station. They've rearrested me over that thing. They said that the, 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 they think I might have done it. I need you to come down, bring me some bail money. So I'm just making up all, all these cliches. And my mum calls me. She's like, I'm in Tesco. I'm in Tesco. Can you not, can you not tell them to check the CCTV? I can't come yet. Just give me 20 minutes. And I just, I'm just listening to go mental down the phone. I said, mum, mum, what day is it? She's like, what do you mean, what day is it? I said, what's the date today? She went, when I get my hands on it. Your poor mother. Your poor mother. Yeah, that, that's my best police story, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like my only sort of real running with the, the police was, uh, I, used to have, I used to have motorbikes. I had a, a, G, a Gixxer 750. Nice. Solid bike. It was yeah. were pretty new. And um, I used to go, we used to go riding with my dad and we were up in Sherburn area. Yeah. And like... I followed my dad like so we go out every weekend you know we'll go for a ride out early doors have a coffee have a, have a McMuffin or whatever yeah. like, that was sort of like the weekend for us it, 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 it was really cool um, and I remember following my dad all, all, we'd gone all over we must have done 100 miles and we were just coming to Sherbin and Elmer where he's got Squire's Cafe and we're probably like I don't know five miles away and I thought oh, I know where I am now I'll overtake my dad and I'll like lead us in so I overtake my dad and we're going through like one of little, uh, little villages near Sherburn yeah. and we're approaching a, a national speed limit and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm doing, it's a, let's say it's a 30 or a 40. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so I thought <laughs> I'll, just, I'll wind it back, you know what I mean? So I thought I dropped a gear, wound it back and I can see the little signs, you know, that says national speed limit. I'm like, whoa, 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 like that. And then this copper just appeared in the middle of the road like that. <laughs> So I, I'm like nearly stopping the things. So I'm like, you know, over, over handlebars. I'm like, fucking hell, like, where, where the fuck did he come from? And like, and I was fuming. And it, 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 his car was like parked on somebody's drive behind a bush. The fuck knows where he was, like yeah. SAS up a tree or something with his gun. You know, with his like. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, pull over. So I pulled over. My dad pulls over behind us. And he's like, get in the car. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm looking, I'm going, I wonder what's it's like, do you know what the speed limit was? And I'm like, no, I'm like, 
But like on, at this point, we're sat in a, in a police car, like back seat of a police car. He's giving me nothing. He's like fucking dead eye, dead eye in me. <laughs> we, we, like the, the national speed limit side's there. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm in back at the police car. I'm, I'm looking out window and I'm like, it's like it's gonna be sixty in it. Like it's a single sixty mile an hour. Do you know how fast you were going? I'm like thirty three. <laughs> <laughs> It's never 30, is it? No. It's always like, 32. Ten, what's, what's 10%? 10, 10, 10, 33. Yeah. It's like, it was somewhat ridiculous. Like, I, I forget the numbers, but I either did 46 or 56 in a 30. So it's like, don't pass go, don't collect 200 pounds straight to jail. You know, it's like, you get a ticket. And I'm like, fucking hell. And my dad's outside pissing himself. So my dad's, <laughs> I'm still living at home at the time. My dad's pissing himself. And he's like taking photos of me in the back of the police car, sending them to my mum. So my mum's panicking anyway. Anytime we go out on bikes, mum's like, fucking hell, you know, just be careful, don't do all stupid, don't speed. And he's like taking pictures and sending them. It's like, your mum's going to kill you. Like, mouthing it through thing. <laughs> Copper's there. He's like, three points, hundred pound fine. I'm like, can I not just do a speed awareness course? He's like, you're taking the piss out you. He's like, of course you can't do a fucking speed awareness course. So yeah, sure as shit, I paid me hundred pound. But the worst thing was, he's like filling form out and he's like, nice bike that. And I'm like, if it fucking is, isn't it? Yeah, he goes, oh, I've got a ZZR 1400. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm sure. And I literally said to him, I'm sure you drive that at the speed limit. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. And he's like, there's a time and a place. And I went, that is literally the fastest motorbike. Yeah. 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 yeah, on the on the road. It was literally like, it's the, it's the fastest road bike yeah. that's been made. Yeah. And I thought, you dickhead. You yeah. know? No excuse for speeding. I, I can't <laughs> stand people at speed. <laughs> Would you let me off? Like, I, I've seen you on telly when you've, when, I've seen you obviously buy the book on TV. But well, I've, I, I've got a, thing and this is this is me all in all and this is what i'm saying i've got a thing for bikers because i'm a biker yeah and i always like um i always believe in advice rather than prosecution for stuff because i don't think there's any malice i think there's a difference going 100 man hours in a 30 zone but i don't think there's any malice i think the bikes are just fast yeah if that makes sense I'm where a car is i think completely different um and with and i'm not saying things are acceptable but I just think there's a difference between just a gentle clip on throttle and you, you can be going so quick, it's untrue. Yeah. But there's no malice. There's no like, I want to come through here at, like Toddle Lane at Bradford, I want to come here at 100, 110 miles. I, I just like we're a bit shady of him because so, I was like, you know, we're, we're, obviously we're in Sherburn. Yeah. He's, he's obviously out there to get tickets that morning. It's like yeah. Saturday morning. And, and you guys are some I'm kind a, of weird I'm bikers a, club. I'm approaching, here, man. No, I'm, listen, man, I'm approaching a national speed limit. Imagine sitting there, like, you, if anywhere, like, I'm, I'm going through, just bimbling through this village. You see national speed, like it's, it's like yeah. So I, this is where I look at it now. If that were me now, this is the way I used to patrol. You've created more of an impact, a positive impact, if you've pulled about three of them in, and you've given them a bit of a dressing down, but you've told them about I'm here and I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. So the next time you're on that road, you will never ever go over speed limit because you'll be like, he's fucking around back of this yeah, bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's the more of the impact I always. I suppose you'd say impact by giving me hundred pound for yeah, yeah. these mother find these motherfuckers. Yeah, but the, <laughs> again, you just think the dicks, though, don't you? Now, yeah. Well, just, that, he, 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 we do his job. Yeah. Like I, I, I saw, I took it for what it was. I had, I, def, I was definitely speeded. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it. He was there doing his job, but I was like, "You fucker!" But that, that, that was fine. When he told me I his ZZR fourteen hundred, I like, "Now nah, you're a prick!" <laughs> like you've got the fastest <laughs> road bike <laughs> yeah. that's available. But with speeding, it's unless they're doing something stupid, it's always been more education than prosecution because people won't learn through prosecution. Yeah, yeah. It's like mobile phones. You prosecute someone from a mobile phone, then they'll be on the mobile phone, then they'll be on the mobile, and it's just it don't get through to people where education does. And I always think it's always better to scare people. And when I say scare people, I don't mean like bully tactics. I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's always better to give that, you know what I mean? That's what I, I know. being really when, lucky as sunshine. Yeah, when you, well, when you're watching like interceptors and you, like, I think it's awful, you know, when you see like a, 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 a drunk driver being pulled over and they're, tra they're trying to sort of blag it and the, the blowing into thing and they're sort of fucking about a bit. And I remember seeing you on it, you know, and you're like, what are you doing? Like, just blow into it. And then when somebody blows over and you're just like laying down the law, you can see the reality just like sinking. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Like, I, I've better, I've, I've caught up. Because that is, that is, that's a criminal offence. Yeah, and yeah. that's when people are, right, you're going at cells where people think, oh, it's only drink driving. Yeah, but when there's someone stuck in your car or when you've put it through yeah, a wall yeah. or whatever, you're thinking like, shit, so now you've lost your job. You're never going to get insured in the car again. You still got to pay your your, your eye perks. It's a, your it car. feels like, you know, when I've seen you dressing people or any copper dressing people down on like interceptors, it's like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. That is, that's what it feels like at that yeah. point. It's like you not get dad routine. Yeah, you've, you've, you're under arrest. You've you've fucked it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. That's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> right. Uh, final thing we want to talk about, which before we went for a piss, dri- piss break and talk about your red light district uh, antics, um, your podcast, what's the, what, obviously our podcast. Yeah, our podcast. Um, but tell us a bit about that then, because it's a bit of an exclusive, I guess, for, for your channel now, isn't it? For, for the yeah. Ben Pearson YouTube channel. So the, the idea being is I just want to speak to people in, in any sort of like sector that's got um, stories of, of, I don't want to say passion, I want adversity, people that have gone through the mill. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be. Like we've, we spoke to Martin Hibbert about the bombing. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be that. It can be anything, but it's, it's where they've gone to the top, they've come back down and they're going back to the top again and they're pushing themselves forward. And I think there's so much inspiration out there. There's so many good stories that people need to listen to because there is a lot of people that are down. Or there's a lot of people that think I can't make stuff or but you're in your own world and the only person who can make it is yourself. The only yeah. person who, who's got to blame. If, oh, I always want to do this in life. Well, if you didn't do it, you've only got yourself to blame. Push forward, go for your goals, always try and succeed. And if you fail when you've tried to succeed, well, at least you can stand there and say, I've got to go. And that's what we want to basically get people listening to and say like, yeah, I can do that. I can I can push myself forward. And there's people that we meet and I just think fantastic. They've got awesome stories. Yeah, it's been, I mean... I was reluctant. Like I re- was reluctant initially to to get on. I-, I wanted you to have a podcast, but then he asked me if I would sit in on the podcast with him and help conduct the interviews. And you know, the interviews that we've already done with people like Martin Hibbert, who was part of the Manchester Arena. It was it was at the Manchester Arena when the bomb bombs went off, and his story is just yeah, like unbelievable, isn't it? You know, like he's such a it's such a harrowing story uh, for what he's doing. He's going to try and he's going to climb Kilimanjaro to to, write, to raise money for the SIA. I think it's it's going to be a fascinating experience, and like I'm excited to sort of get it off the ground and meet yeah. the, the guests we've got lined up for that are just incredible. And you know, the, the other people that are coming in, obviously we're not getting spoiler alerts, but they've all been through an, an awesome. I don't mean something tragic, but an awesome journey in their lives. Where they come Why have I not been invited on this podcast? Like, <laughs> well, you can do me a favour. Come on now. Well, You're Josh, amazing guest. Well, invited. actually, Josh said you are, but it's just, we'll see how this one goes because he says, oh. Adam might not like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been a good podcast for me. I think it's been, uh, yeah. there's been, it's been, a, it's been good spirits this one. Well, re- honestly, Adam, I'd really formally like to invite you on ours as well, because like- Formally? Said, formally, oh, like, I've got an invitation I don't know what talking about, like, but- It's an RSVP thing. You've got to reply and you've got to wear black tie. <laughs> so, so. I don't think I've got any ties, let alone black ones. <laughs> you look like that comedian, you know, when we did the garlic bread song and, and you, I've, I've put a meme out before, but you know that comedian on Countdown that wears a suit with, with, with Oh beer. yeah, what's he what's, called? People said that's me before, I forget his name. Yeah, that's what you look like in a black tie. Probably, yeah. But yeah, so the podcast is called "I've Got Your Back." Um, out for the back time this goes out, it will be it will be available. We're going to put clips of it on your YouTube channel, and it should be available on Spotify and iTunes and and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but else do so I guess we need to sort of start coming, bring it to a close because we're quite we've done, done some time on this podcast. Have you got any final questions that you wanted to? No, I think it feels like another one of those that could go for a part two because I think yeah. I'd probably come up with that. We should really put it out as well to uh, like to Twitter and whatnot. Um, social media to get people to ask questions they'd quite like to maybe ask an ex-cop because that, that yeah, probably yeah. a lot of people would uh, like well, to Well, let, let's but. do that then. Let's let's get an, a, a part two in get the diary. Yeah, and we, we'll, put it, we'll, see, we'll put the comments in, put your comments, put your questions in the <laughs> comments of this video. Man, last, I couldn't get my words out last week. Somebody put in, in one of the comments, they said, Josh needs to get an extra shot in that coffee. Uh, Joel, 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 needs an extra Joel needs an extra shot in his coffee. He, he, he looks goosed. Yeah. I very rarely even read the comments because this isn't actually my channel really. But um, I yeah, I read that one. I thought, ghost. I've not heard that in fucking ages. I feel ghost, man. My mum says that sometimes. <laughs> He's ghost. But yeah, let's do a part two. So if you've got any questions for Ben, drop it in the comments below and we'll, we'll, we'll have you back, man. Yeah, mate, I'd love to come Have back. you back? It's a little plug for his new podcast. Yeah. Hey. 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 I've always got your back, lad. <laughs> always got your back. <laughs> any final comments from you, mate? No, I just want to say thank you. It's been fantastic. And I've always, I've looked forward to meeting you for a while, Adam. And obviously... No, thank Josh, you. and I just think you're the, you're the man that rocks the awesome beard. I think that's about all I am, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Nobody looks forward to meeting me, not even my mum. <laughs> <laughs> perpetual disappointment, but thank you. I appreciate the kind words. No, gentlemen. Where can people find you then, dude? Uh, they can find me on uh, Twitter, BS underscore Pearson. Um, on Instagram, Ben Pearson, retired1965. You verified yet on Twitter? 
Don't start me this shit. Those, yeah. those oh. motherfuckers. I'm like, yeah, we said the what it's like everything you try to do, they just don't want to know, do they? He was sat in office and <laughs> it was sat in office like, what do I need to put for this bit? And he's like filling it all in. I said, mate, you won't get verified. Don't and bother, and man. It's, it's, don't what, you spent 20, 20 minutes just like writing it all out. And it, it came back automatically like you are, not, you are not you are not verified. <laughs> like, no fuckers looked at that. No one in an office uh. has gone, right, we'll check out his credentials. They've literally just gone through two beeps and a but what gets me, this really what balls my piss. There's like <laughs> It's just like that? Jim Johnson from uh, <laughs> Mega <laughs> King Institutions that's got one follower. The Bingley Herald. Herald yeah, and it's, it's like blue tick. Who the fuck are you? It's, 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 it's journalists. It's easy. It's, did you select the content creator category? Was that it? Uh, I've, cre- I've tried yeah, did, all. Yeah, yeah. I've tried a few because I actually qualify in a few categories, but content creator says to me, you don't have enough follow. I'm like, are you fucking joking? I've got half a fucking billion views or something. Yeah. But anyway, let's not get anyway, that. That's <laughs> the subject. We don't go there. It's yet, more funny that I don't have it. I think I'm, I like the gag that it keeps running. Anyway. Yeah. So no, again, awesome. Thank you very much for having me. It means a lot. Class, mate. Well, I think it's been a, a belter podcast. I've really enjoyed that. It's um, been good. And uh, let's, as, as always, when we have a guest on, let us know in, in the comments as well uh, if you'd like to see anyone else on the show. But, you know, find we need to find our level. So <laughs> somebody about Ben's level, I don't know. <laughs> so, 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 don't, don't be asked. I, we, we probably can't get anyone like... Uh, Barry, Barry Gallo. Yeah, we probably can't get Gary Barlow on. My <laughs> mum would flip and love that though. We know a guy that knows the guy. We actually met a guy yesterday <laughs> yeah, that knows yeah. Gary Barlow, yeah. Use some, use some of these, because uh, you know you know everyone, Josh. We need, yeah, but let us know if you want to see anyone in particular on and we'll try and get them on. <laughs> right. Catch you on the next one. Peace.